Hello and welcome everybody to Between Two Fans, where you're joined by myself and Steve, and we are going to be covering all things sports over the last week. We're talking URC rugby, we're talking international breaks, I'm trying to sound excited by international breaks. Yeah, I know, what a we're waste of time. We're talking Proteus Cricketing Selection, F1, MotoGP, um, the IPL's just started. Stevie, there's a, not as much going on. But it seems like it's developing into um, into a new season of sport. But first of all, how are you doing today? Yeah, fine, fine. Things are a little bit cooler this side. Um, with the heat wave season, we've done a little bit. So we're appreciating that. And uh, yeah, good weekend of, of South African sport. Um, so can't complain. Can't complain, Skull team. Yeah. Can never complain with, with South African teams doing well, particularly in the URC. Um, Stevie, let's get into... This has become a very um, somber part of the show for me, the, this prediction show um, yeah. that we do. And week on week, predict three sporting matches between Steve and I and see who comes out on top. And it hasn't been good. Um, coming into this week, I was losing um, 5-2. Um, mm. So really, really scrambling. Um, and we, we went for three, three um, rugby predictions. Um, so the first one being um, Connacht versus Lions. Um, where, I mean, Lions essentially out of out of nowhere, having received a red card, went to a place where no other South African team, I don't think, has won yet in, in Galway and managed to get a 38-14 win. Stevie, mm-hmm. my prediction was Connacht by five. Your prediction was Lions by five. So, I mean, both of us way off, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think even the Lions sitting in the change room was going, sheesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, what? Where did that come from? That's a, that's a boys. Yeah, yeah Slava Kanye, you should go off more often, bro. Yeah, back of the road, Dave say. But, uh, so that, that's a 1-0 lead. Match two was Stormers versus Edinburgh where it's a real shame and and it's because I went so conservative because I thought you wouldn't have faith in my boys, but just I went Stormers by 10, you went Stormers by 14. I mean, saying Stormers by 10 at home, it's just that was, that was criminal from me. Stormers mm-hmm. winning that game, 43 points to 21. So again, comfortable, comfortable win. And then Sharks versus Ulster. We both went Ulster. I said by <laughs> six, you said by yeah. 10. Um, and Sharks won by 10, um, 22 points to 12. So, Stevie, another one. It's 6 2. You no, know, the week of that dub. Uh, I'm starting to feel like a <laughs> hamster over here, dude. Well, in, in, in the race to in the race to 10, I think, I think I, I've still got a, I've got a little bit of leeway, but I need to start stepping on it now. Mm. Um, if you, if you, unless there's anything to go by, you'll choke at the at the final <laughs> at the final hurdle. Yeah. No, what, is it, what, what is this last round wins? <laughs> yeah, it's, always, it's always it's always last round wins. Bro. That, that's yeah. how this works. Um, but Stevie, before we get into the URC fixtures, do you watch Chasing the Sun this weekend? I did. I did. Um, I mean, we all know how. I mean, it's 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 one of those, isn't it? Um, you know, every single harsh train is going to be tugged and uh, you know takes you straight back. I'm actually really looking forward to. This coming weekend, because oh, the first yeah. weekend of the year of, of the World Cup, um, I obviously kind of from here, but moving forward now, it'll be the stuff from when I was actually in France. Um, so it's going to be like a nice little trip to memory lane, all the press conferences and stuff that they show and like the trainings and the matches and stuff like that. I'll have actually been over there. So it's going to be a nice little little throwback. Um, you, you're hoping for a little a little sneak peek in the background there, or is there some information we don't know? Are we going to see Stevie yeah. underneath <laughs> that, 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 that under the camera? camera. No, yeah, unfortunately. You, didn't get the call up this season, but uh, one up. one day. Oh, didn't I get mean, the that, call is, up. that is that is any rugby um, broadcaster's dream, right? To make but, just to make uh, a chasing hopefully, the sun. Episode. Hopefully, we'll see. And and when we, we yeah when we do when we do the three peat, um then 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 you'll, then you'll see Steve there. Uh, can I label it an early criticism? Yes. And I'm a bit worried about whether this is just for the first game or whether it's going to be for all the game. But the lack of um, coaches' mics. During the first game, for me, it was what, a big not, not hearing. Not able to, yes, because because we had we heard well, we heard we didn't hear anything. We just saw the reactions. Yeah. Um, but in the first one, we heard you know them actually speaking about what's going on during the game, and for me, that yeah. was like the biggest insight for me of the entire thing. Like the halftime talks, obviously, are big, but I really enjoyed watching the during the game reactions that yeah. and stuff like that. So I'm hoping it was just a one sort of game because if there's none of that, I'm going to be a bit disappointed. Yeah, I think also 
particularly for that England game, I want to hear all this mm. kind of yeah. stuff. I mean, all three games, you think about the one point in it, you know, the, yeah. the big calls yeah. on the, on the scrap yeah. and stuff like that. The, yeah. the tension of those, I just really want to hear what was being said it, at it the could time. Be, it could be maybe actually too much insight, to be fair, because it's largely the same coaching staff. Um, but, I mean, it's chasing the sun. It's 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 just it's phenomenal to watch. It's never going to have the same like story arc as the last one where we really yeah. started at rock bottom and came world champions. Like that was like, you know, written in heaven. And now it's like, well, we're one of the favorite. Yeah, sure. they, try, they, try, yeah. they, they try to create that, you know, obviously we had that end of your tour, which wasn't too great. And they sort of try to create that narrative that we had, you know, fallen off a little bit to that, you know, we were, yeah. they, but we were like, guys, we were always within the top three to four starts going yeah. to the World Cup. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Was never we were never underdogs in that World Cup. Yeah, but no, it's it, it's great. Love it. I I had to scramble and chase to manage myself to get like a VPN to watch this side of the world, but had to be done. But Stevie, let's yeah. get into the UFC. Yeah, well, four out of four, isn't it? Uh, so we saw Sharks kicking things off this weekend, twenty <laughs> points to twelve victory. A lot of questions asked: Is them that being back? Uh, Stormers very um, comfortably beating Edinburgh. We've had a good season so far at home. So Stormers very much, as uh, Dom Dobson was mentioning earlier, do a dark time the season. Important victory. Lions with an emphatic victory. I mean, I think that probably the the, the result of the weekend, especially going down to fourteen men and yet running in went to final. I think the last time I, a, any South African team won that, I think it was the Springboks back in like two thousand eight. Wow. Um, so yeah, so it shows you how dominant uh, and and Lion Tides in general have been over us in that part of the world. And then Bulls, 31 points to 10 victory over Dragons. Uh, I mean, comprehensive. Could have been probably been big, a, bit, uh, a bit more. But um, they've set up a very nice clash against the to this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I mean, I suppose you start with the Sharks. Uh, is them, is the, have they turned a corner? Or do you think this might be a bit of an anomaly result? I, I do think they've um, turned a corner. I think, I mean, we saw how good how dominant their forward pack was. I mean, they're literally bringing off a bomb squad or bringing on rather a bomb squad of box. Like, yeah. I feel like there's only so they are, they, they've like plugged away at the same tactic, just recruit spring box, recruit spring box, recruit mm. spring box. And I feel like that could only go on for so long without it working. So I do feel like it's slowly, it's slowly um, starting to tick, particularly in their forward pack. Um, and now it's just, I kind of, I think about the backs now, catching up but um you know an Elster team that's that's doing well in the TRC um so I know I, I was impressed and and I, I think it'll be a good test again this weekend versus Edinburgh mm. yeah I mean I think I think the front row is a big thing and and jumped up she was moaning a few weeks ago about the fact he hasn't been able to select his his best side and he was saying that for the first time this season he's been able to select his best side and I think it did show um yeah, I mean, for me, the, the Sharks have always relied so much on that scrum um, for, for that sort of set-piece dominance. And when you've got Oxen Chair, Vincent Koch, you know, Bongi Benambi as your front row, you know, that's that's yeah. what you mentioned, according to his days, and then Stuka, and all that, adding Chevin Yukani to the mix next season. Um, yeah, it's so fun. it's it's a bit childish. Um, but in a team among stars, Ethan Hooker, um, uh, a nice, and, and not a non-household name coming away with man of the match. So... Yeah, Interestingly good. enough, you know, I've, I, they've, we've been saying that they've been lacking a a, a good inside centre for for a while. This is they're, they're kind of their problem. They announce Andre Estes, and then the next game sure. out, um, Ethan yeah. Hooker goes up as, as a man of the match performance at inside centre, and he's also he's, he's also he's a big lad. He's sort of, uh, almost 100 kgs <laughs> and and about 1.9, so he's a, he's a large large human. But um, I think it just shows you how much they've missed that that presence in the midfield. Um, so I think a lot of things starting to click into place. Um, too late, Along with really. Not backing Barrett Cohen Bosch anymore. <laughs> yeah, and CM Suku. Yeah, I mean we've been, we've we've only been saying it the entire season. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it's actually it's so good to see him have a stretch of games and and he's growing into it as well. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see what he continues to do with that jersey and just um in the like him uh, just as one to watch within the, like the South African setup in general. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, um, it's far too late for them to do anything in the URC anyway, so we can move right along because, you know, they're going to finish maybe a 12th little push. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think I think a very significant result is that Stormers game. I think Stormers have, I mean, they're one point ahead of the Lions, which shows two things. First of all, how good of a season the Lions are having, but I think also how Stormers have not quite been the same team throughout the season that they have been the last two seasons. Um, for me, they looked a lot better recently. 
Um, but I think I mean, you, you as a home fan, I reckon this this is the stretch of games where you start proving that there are genuine contenders. And do you feel confident yet, or do you think we still you still got to be relatively a lot of work to do? I think I mean all of the South African teams pretty much have a good home stretch of fixtures now, and we love the late surge up the table. Um, if we want any chance of winning or getting close to it, we need it. I think we need to finish and kind of. The, I mean, we fit at the moment. Fourth, I mean, third might be a bit of a, be a bit of a push, um, but not completely out of sight. Um, I just think it's it relies so much on us being at home, which which is why I say I think top three. Then you can maybe there's a chance that uh, that the Bulls and 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 Nets they get knocked out by someone else, and then you get a home final. All of a sudden, um, I think that makes it complete difference. But I mean, a lot, a lot of, again, a lot of these South African teams had a lot of home games in in this last kind of um, stretch from um, week kind of thirteen to eighteen. Um, like kind of not more than two away fixtures, and essentially that's been the Achilles' heel of most of most of the African teams. Um, you know, Lions getting one out the way. I, 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 so I mean, to t- just to finish on the Stormers, I think I think success would be third or fourth. I'm hoping yeah. third. I think third will be very. I'll be very stoked with. I don't think we'll get yeah. to second or first, obviously. Um, but I want to hear from you about about the Lions. What what, what is success for you this season? Top eight. I, I, Top eight. top eight, just top eight. Champions Cup. What well, Champions Cup qualification? I mean, you eighth already. You know, um, so I think that for me is is the most think... important thing. Yeah. So, so you you don't you don't think you don't think any higher? No. Look, I mean, well, so top eight. I don't really care because at the end of the day, I think you know fourth. Fourth, fourth is. <laughs> I mean, we're, 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 we're five points behind Munster. So if you go on a really good string of games, you could maybe sneak a fourth and get a home playoff. That would be that would be massive. Yeah. But to, I think at the beginning of the season, if you had just said you, playoffs right. and a spot in the Champions Cup, I'd say that would be a really successful season. Yeah. We, we only yeah, no, it's, I mean, if you look at between, between fourth and like 12th, fourth, fourth and 11th are nine points. Yeah. So, so, so coming in and out of the that top eight is actually there are going to be a lot of moving shakers mm. over the next couple of weeks. Like, I mean, for example, this, this, this dropped down to tenth. And yeah, exactly. Like, oh. actually, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I think looking at this weekend, you got the Lions, Lions Ospreys. That's a massive uh, game because <laughs> Lions beat Ospreys. They can suddenly go eight, nine points clear of them. You know, so there's a massive swing there. For example, mm. um, and I think those that's, that's why those games are important. You know, Ulster taking on Stormers. A big, huge game for the Lions because, regardless of that result, the Lions mm-hmm. win and they'll overtake either the Stormers or the El- or Ulster because they're one 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 point behind Stormers and level on points in Ulster. So, um, you know, Edinburgh. You know, if Edinburgh were to slip against the Sharks, for example, and all of a sudden the Lions could be sitting up at fifth, sixth. Yeah. But um, so it's incredibly it's incredibly stacked. It's now coming up down to a lot of other games mm-hmm. being as important as as the games you're actually going to be playing. For sure, and I think looking ahead at this weekend, obviously the big one is going to be Leinster Bulls, and I'm hoping mm. that they both put out good teams. Um, and well, I think the Bulls definitely will. Hopefully, Leinster do. Don't just take this as a, <laughs> a walk in the park fest as they as they usually do. But Sharks, Edinburgh, Stormers, Ulster, um, as you said, uh, I mean, Benetton, Connacht is going to be massive now. Mm. Um, Bears need to win that. Um, having lost this last weekend, um, to Scarlet. So, um, yeah, it's coming down to crunch time in the URC. So it, it's good to see it heat up a little bit, not just the um, kind of monotony of the the game on game game stuff. Um, but Stevie, let's get into the football. Um, and first of all, let's touch on Bafana. Two two games, one versus Andorra. Might have been the first time we've ever played Andorra. And I'm willing to bet the first time that South African, that every single one of this team has ever been to Andorra. Um, but that was a 1 1 draw. We had 80% possession, that's 16 shots. But, you know, unfortunately, only, only matters the one. Um, Elias um, Mokwana with the 25th minute goal. And then last night versus away, away to Algeria, um, a 3 3 draw. Um, Temba Zwane scoring um, two there, Brace. 
um, and Ukram Reiners um, in the 66th minute, um, scoring one. Um, they had a player, um, Benzia, scored an absolute worldy flick up and almost bicycle kick esque. And I think he pulled the hamstring afterwards. But um, <laughs> good game nonetheless. Just just the trials and tribulations that come with international football, which always yeah. seems to be a little bit odd. Um, but some other notable fixtures over the international break. Um, Germany getting two wins, 2-1 two, win over Netherlands and a 2 no win in France. So showing a good bit of form ahead of the Euros where they'll be hosting um, later on in the year. Um, Brazil versus Spain, 3-3 three, three last night. Um, and so Brazil getting a draw there and then a win away um, at Wembley, 1-0 no win, um, beating the hosts, England. Um, and then... England um, last night drawing 2-2 to Belgium Duke Bellingham last minute equaliser yeah, but Kobe Mayne you man of the match eh? Kobe Mayne I, I, I am a little bit converted on Kobe Mayne I'm not going <laughs> to he's but I, I hope he's hard not to like to be fair yeah exactly I, I don't want him to be good because he's from Man United but like well, there's, otherwise there's not much to hate yeah. about him um, but yeah a lot to be excited about if you are an England fan, to be fair. A lot of um, talent coming through, but are they making the most of it? I think this Euros will be essentially the um, the last opportunity for Gareth Southgate, um, and then it will be on to the next one, unless he gets um, a massive victory there. But Stevie, the Prem is back this weekend, mm. finally. An actual football. To be fair, I didn't mind the break. I didn't hate it. I was stress-free this weekend. It was quite nice, actually. Like my, I think I saved a couple of years of my life just not watching Liverpool um, for the first time in a while. Um, but the big game, obviously, of the weekend um, being Man City-Arsenal. Um, again, we, I mean, we spoke about the Liverpool City fixture two weeks ago. Was that the title decider? Ended up in in, in a one one draw. How are you seeing Man City versus Arsenal going? We saw John Stones get injured last night. Mm-hmm. Is that going to affect them? Who's going to be leggy from internationals? It is the Sunday late kickoff, so there is that to help them at least. Yeah, so they got they got a bit of time um, for for recovery and stuff like that. And you always wonder when people go off injured internationally how injured they actually are. Yeah, um, you know, it's that oh, no, no oh, oh, it's a little bit of a tweak I'm out of here, you know, almost yeah. just like, yeah, I've started 20 minutes, I reckon yeah. I, can, I can dust. So, what do you uh, look at told them that you have max 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, go out and have a stretch, have a bit of a bit of a, it's basically like a training session. Go out there, have 20 minutes out there, and then and then get off before some, um, you know, some, somebody decides to do something stupid. But look, I mean, it's it's once again, it's the look. You have got Liverpool, Brighton. Um, I mean, obviously that game before could could be. I mean, Brighton would pull for a big result, and all of a sudden, City can go out to our top of the log with a win over Arsenal. It is at the Etihad, so I just think this is where City come into their own. You know, this this time of the season, the, you know, the title on the line where they can't slip up, and they, this is where yeah. you know you've got players there have all won <laughs> treble. You know, they've got the bottle, and the question is, can Arsenal? Arsenal win this game; they deserve to go on and be and genuinely challenge the title. You know, um, yeah. Arsenal first, so yeah, it's, they it's, win. The, it, it's theirs to lose. Yeah, theirs no, to literally. Lose. So it's it's if they're going to be title contenders, this is the kind of game you have to win. This is the game you have to win. And they didn't last season, which is you know why essentially mm-hmm. they weren't in contention. They've already done it this season. They've taken. They've only given Liverpool one point, taken off four from them. So they've ticked off one box there. Can they do it for City? Um, it, it, it's it's the classic, you know, you know Guardiola versus his um, his prodigy Arteta. Um, obviously, with his time back at Man City, um, yeah. so there's just there's, it's becoming quite a layered um, fixture um, nowadays, which which just makes it um, that much more exciting. Um, yeah, I think we're also going to see. Um... In terms of fatigue, you know, obviously big Champions League runs coming in now as well. And so so really I'll get to the the business end of, of the season. So, you know, this is where injuries become so important. Often now, yeah. especially after uh, after international break, you might start seeing players who have been injured coming back. So it's it's about, you know, being streetwise with your with your with your squad as much as ever. Because you can't afford to drop points. You know, the temptation is to play your strongest team every single weekend. Um, but you do that, and you and you and big yeah. players get injured, and all of a sudden you're going to Champions League semi-final without 
you know, two or three of your best players. Uh, yeah. And so it's an interesting time to see how, how they manage the squads, and that's where the squad death really comes in, um, which is usually where City come to their own. Yeah, that's just – that's yeah, the, their bench is better than, than most teams' style lineups, which is often just what sets them apart. Um, but the best news is that Jesus, there's no more international breaks. Mm. The next international break is the Euros, and this is a tournament we actually – like, yeah, I know. It's, ama- like, it's amazing how we absolutely hate anything international until it gets to like a big tournament and then we're like all in. Yeah, all in, all in, all in, all in. Absolutely. Um, but Stevie, the, um, to move on to the cricket this week, uh, the IPL started this weekend. Yeah. Um, and Jeepers, I mean, we're, we're what, four days in? We've already like seven or eight matches. The amount yeah. of IPL is just, <laughs> just mental. It's near impossible to keep up with. No, no. I mean, there's two games of the weekend. And I just wish it started like an hour or two later because, you know, I, I usually sort of end up finishing work at about seven, eight-ish. Um, and I usually catch like the last, I don't know if I'm lucky, you know. So the, the 4 p.m. start, a bit for sure. That was a, if that was a 6 p.m. start, that would yeah. be like perfect. Aqua 6, like the SA20 is the only ideal. But anyway, uh, we have had quite a few games. A lot of South Africans have been in the mix, which has been really good to see. So if you were thinking about getting into IPL, well, there's a lot of South African representation, but importantly, they're actually playing. You know, we've had in the past with a lot yeah. of South Africans involved, but not playing as of yet. Game. Whereas we saw debuts for Nanjay Berger over the weekend, Joe Katsia is getting a run, Deval Brevis uh, was in the runs as well. Um, so a couple of our standout performances over the weekend from our South African lads. Uh, I thought you would see that two innings. One, he got a stock, got a 31 with about 150 strike rate. He got a three yesterday. Uh, shout out to KG Obara, who's been very, very good early on in the tournament um, for um, uh, Punjab Kings. Uh, he bought in against RCB. He went four overs, two wickets for 23 runs with an economy of 5.75, um, which is a proper no, shift. Difficult. And in uh, the other game that they played, uh, he ended up with four overs, one for three, six, economy of nine. Bit expensive, but um, did get the wicket of uh, Shea Hope. So so he does tend to be a bit of a game breaker there. Um, other than that, uh, Diego Brewers, as I mentioned, was in the runs. Uh, bit of, a bit of a, maybe not, a, not the fast innings. Uh, difficult to say he was the difference when uh, they came up just short in that chase. Uh, 46 with the uh, strike of 120 is probably a little bit slow uh, for what you ideally want. Uh, Quinton de Kock hasn't quite come off yet, but uh, I'm trying to find the game. Yeah, I know classes, so I don't get it wrong. He was very much in the runs. Um, where was he going now? Three. Yeah, well, that's like a hundred, sort of two hundred striker or something silly. Um, a very, yeah, a very. I mean, you come to expect that now from from Klaassen. Um Yeah, excited to see Brevis, To be fair, get a go because um, he actually didn't have the best of SA twenty season. So to see him nah. actually get out early in the in the competition, yes. 120 strike rate isn't great, but 46 runs can't be yeah. ignored either. So um, good start from him. Pretty Stubbs missed his opportunity, only getting five, I think, in the end. Um, I think the big one is, do we see Quenna Mapaka? Well, with a long side bomber at, at MI. Um, I mean, essentially, we're looking at all these players at the IPL. This could be our starting 11. Um at the at the World Cup, mm. essentially. Well, you know? yeah, I think I think a lot of these guys. I mean, you're Andre Burgess, for example. I don't think he would have been in Rob Walters' plans six months no. ago. Um, you you go in, in but you have a good but, IPL. Correct, correct. You go and have a big IPL. All of a sudden, you could change <laughs> change the, uh, the the attitude there. Again, I think Brevis' selection comes down to the IPL. I think Jail Katsia is is already on the plane. I think uh, it'll be re- it'll be reinforcing to see KG bowling nicely. You know, because I think that there has been a bit of a, a narrative popping up that he's not a great T20 bowler, which I think is a bit harsh. Um, so, so I think that he, he I mean, I think I'll, I'll be keen to see how um, Adam Malcolm goes as well. You know, he's been just right. getting better and better. Didn't have the best first game, but as a captain, for example, you know, we, we, he, needs, he needs confidence with the bat. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody's, nobody's doubts his captaincy abilities having going back to back at Sunrise is he's in Cape, but um there's another captain's armband over there in the IPL, so I think yeah. he just focuses on batting for, yeah, for a change. Class, and obviously, we just wanted him to stay in that kind of form. Yeah, so, just be just be the best South African player. Yeah, continue, continue, to, continue to be as disruptive as he has been. Yeah. Oh, so I think for me, I mean, it's just about 
seeing all these players getting confidence so that when we go to the Caribbean, we've yeah. got an 11 that can win us a World Cup, we do, which we do. I mean, we've always said going into any World Cup on paper, there are enough players and match winners to to win us the tournament. You know, yeah. um, I do think T20 is a, a format we've never given enough attention to. Um, and, and I'm hoping that's what the SA20 was going to sort of change. The fact that, you know, we've got these players playing in big games, playing in the, the, the big stage, but we've always yeah. underperformed this criminally. Is underperformed. Stage, this is a bigger stage than most T20 internationals, if we're being honest. Like the pressure yeah. that comes with the IPL is actually is where kind of, you know, diamonds are, are made because of um, the pressure that they put under and, you know, the money that they're playing for. It's just mm. the stakes are higher, right? Um, it's kind of though, Tim. You have a couple of bad games. You get, you can get yeah, very get quickly. Scripted. You have yeah, one bad quickly. season. You can all of a sudden not get a contract for a while. It's, I mean, they're always like the constants. For example, like a Lungi for example, he's always been an IPL constant, not playing this season because of injury. Um, but some some South African players have have sometimes had one or two bad tournaments, and they've yeah. never seen an IPL again. Yeah, I think Rasi van der was there for maybe mm. one or two. Shipped it on, gone. Um, yeah, it's it's a cutthroat, cutthroat world of the IPL, and Stevie, it's a cutthroat world when it comes to Proteus contracts. Um, I Anrich looked here, nothing up. So so yesterday, the Proteus men's or oh, CSA announced um, who of the Proteus men will be receiving um, their contracts, um, and there are a couple notable mentions. Um, Starting with people um, with new contracts um, who didn't have previously, Nandre Berger, Tony DeZorzi, and Andile Hesakwaya has had before, then didn't have, and now is back in. Um, out is Anrich Nokia, um, who hasn't played um, for a while through injury, but is actually at the IPL currently and is expected to play there. David Beddingham, who took his name out of the um, SA20 to go play in New Zealand for... Uh, B strings South African time produced played very well in New Zealand, um, and no contract for him. Um, Wayne Parnell hasn't really been playing for South Africa. Quinton de Kock, um, Sasanda Magala, Keegan Peterson, um, and then most notably, other people who managed to retain their contracts um, was Ryan Rickleton and Bjorn Vertain, both of which actually haven't played a lot of approaches cricket recently. Stevie, I think the biggest one is. Anrik Mokia and David Beddingham. Let's start with Beddingham. As as I mentioned, the man takes his name out of the hat for the SA20. He says he wants to go play um, test cricket. He's He makes quite a, you know, almost left South Africa to, to never play again. Has come back to earn his spot. Has earned his spot. Showed a lot of promise and um, potential with the knocks that he's, that he's had at test level. Went to New Zealand with the B-string team, you know, didn't have to, could have gone after a bit of money at the SA20 and still isn't followed up with a contract. Do you have any logical explanation for what Cricket South Africa are doing in this decision? Like, what what is this? Because uh, the whole of South African cricket fan base is outraged, essentially. So can I start my rant now? Eh? Can we just get it over and done with now? Yes, do it. Okay. Let's... CSA a year ago promised us dual contract system. White ball, yes. red ball. All this yes. talk about how we need to understand the new environment of cricket, the new landscape, the fact that there are going to be specialist white ball players, specialist red ball players, and we have to adapt to the times. We have to see how do we retain players who are only going to play one format? How do we make sure that we've still got a good test team? Well, over a year ago it was mentioned, we've now reduced the number of contracts we've given, and they're just still centrally contracted. Why? I mean, first of all, what, we're not surprised because this is a CSA. Anup Nokia, who I think was two seasons ago, won SA Player of the Year, doesn't receive a contract. And we, and, and we have to find out by an exclusive interview, obviously, when a couple of journalists are missing, you know, saying what's going on, why he wasn't given a contract. And, you know, the explanation comes that uh, he has opted to focus on some T20s for the, for the time being, with a view to start playing for South Africa once again towards the end of the year. Young fan, he wants to maximize his revenue. Cool, 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 whatever. One liner in the press release would have done that. David Bellingham goes over, scores 100, looks, he is a shoe in, in the test team. Yeah, he walks and in. He, he's, he's one of the first names on the, on, on, yes. on the starting 11. So if you were doing <laughs> white ball and red ball contracts, he would have a red ball contract. If you're doing white ball and red ball contracts, Quinton de Kock would have a T20 contract. 
if he's still planning on playing another World Cup, for example, uh, and stuff like that. You know role. how? Yeah, but it's, I mean, there are so many players in that squad who are not going to be multi-format players. So why are we not doing what we were promised with regards to white ball, red ball contracts? Tabre Shamsi is not playing test cricket. He could be on yeah. a white ball contract. Yeah. Why yeah. are we not on Same different David contracts? Miller. Let's give him a white ball, white white ball, contract. ball contract. You know, yeah. it's, it's, I just cannot understand how in this, after all the promises and all that, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. I mean, we're not surprised because it's CSA. And again, the, 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 the communication is dreadful. You know, no talk about why there aren't different contracts. No mention as to why Clinton de Kock has been left out. Why Adam Nokia has been left out. You know, yeah, I, I'm just... It's, it's so frustrating because it always just feels like Cricket South Africa just relies on um, talent coming through the system and essentially an inherent desire of the players to want to play mm. for their country, not because of the governing body that they're being ruled by, just because of some patriotism. Yeah, that they might pure, have. Pure, pure love for SA. That's and, it. And, that, and that's it. They, they, they do bugger all to, to support their players. They don't, they don't, um, there's so many retiring South African cricketers that mm. have just been so mistreated and have gone out not uh, in the way that they they deserved. And it's just, I mean, you just have to look at the the Factory PC example, um, you know, to to see how how they treat someone who's given everything for the shirt mm. and just to dismay them, um, someone like that, like they have. You would never see that at an Australia cricket. You would never see that in the, in the England or India cricket board. This just does not happen. And it, it's essentially when people like David Bellingham are, are deciding whether or not just to take a UK contract and, and bugger off, mm. why wouldn't they? Like, secure your future financially. You, I, I don't think you can ever, you know, go against someone for making that decision in the first place. But then when you have a, a governing board that may, that's making it a lot easier, like that, that decision is just like it's a no-brainer. It, it becomes it at some point. So it's, it's just frustrating. Just show you care. Exactly, white ball, red ball. Like they are not the same skill set. They used to be. No. That cricket used to be. You know, you could play a bit of everything. You know, the Graham Graham Smith, who like nowadays I think would probably just be like like a strong test player. He probably wouldn't yeah, be playing and, that. And, 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 but, like an could probably play early eyes, but he wouldn't have. Yeah, he would not be playing in a T Twenty side. No, exactly. So this is that's like an old school way of thinking, and it's just. It's, and again, we'll prompt things not delivered. It's it's just classic CSA. Um, but Stevie, what what are your thoughts on on the rest of the exclusions? Obviously, you and I'm not here. Yeah, we've touched on. I think Wayne Parnell kind of makes sense. We I don't think, yeah, I think... we will see him in his African shirt again. So Sandra Magala, unfortunately, has just hasn't been able to keep fit um, yeah. and, and not sustainably at least. So I mean, I'm just very disappointed in how Sandra's. I think career has gone because I feel like if I'm not sure if it's completely him or or the the mm. um, strength and conditioning coaches at, at, at his clubs, but I think you you have an incredible talent there, particularly in the T20 circuit, who yeah. could be <clears throat> at playing you know IPLs, T20 World Cups, and winning us um, potentially T20 World Cups if he was if he was managed correctly. Um, but unfortunately, injuries have got the better of him. And then a big one, I think Keegan Peterson, kind of um, the test team um, and selectors showing their hand a bit there. You know, yeah. he got his chance again in New Zealand, didn't take any opportunity. So looks like it's probably the end of the road um, in his South African um, stint, at least for the time being. Yeah, which I think is fair. Um, I think he hasn't. I think he's had yeah. more than enough chances. He, he came on the scene and he's been a frustrating player to watch because he's, so, <laughs> he's looked so comfortable at the level. You know, he's never looked gone out, looked out of all, like, looked in all sorts and then gone out, you know, he's always gone out, looked technically competent, yeah. placed really nice um, shots, but just hasn't been scoring runs. There's just been no return. Uh, Carl Verain for me is a strange one. Um, should be Conrad coming out and saying openly that Carl Verain is still ahead of, uh, you know, Rickleton in the test setup and that he's still his number one keeper, for example. Mm. Um, and a month later, he doesn't get, con- doesn't get a contract. Right. Um, Look, I mean, I'm not to say that he necessarily deserves one. It's just, you know, they're obviously back. And, and look, he's also been yeah. a fantastic form domestically. So, 
bit yeah. of a strange. And, and he, had good, he actually had a good SA20, ironically, in, in the in the one form yeah. that people don't rate him in. He, he's actually stepped up. So he's he's taken steps forward, I believe, in the last year, not internationally necessarily, but but locally. So, you know, for him to all talk to you about him now and then and then moving away. Could be, it could um, be a sign of perhaps Stubbs stepping into a, a keeper role at test level. I mean, yeah, or, or, that. even Rickleton. Potentially yeah, but, it's, but again, it's, it's a strange. It's, I mean, Rickleton for me is a strange one, given the fact that he hasn't really been given that the opportunity, much opportunity. But you know, I think, so. I think it's more of a, for me, I'm relieved that he's been able to keep it because I think it, most South African cricketers or the fans rather want to watch Rickleton in that test team and, and say he deserves to be there and hasn't been given enough opportunity to retain his spot there. You know, even Stubbs being picked ahead of him, I think is is ridiculous. I think Ryan Rickleton is a better test player. But I think that's a relief for me that he's been picked. It's just surprising that, again, yeah. the, the exclusion of, 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 of Garena, perhaps. Big FT for me is Novian Mulder. Yeah. Massive. To, again, but people will sit there and say, well, internationally, he's, he hasn't stepped up. And I think that's a fair criticism that he hasn't been able to do deliver on the international stage what he's done the local stage. But look at the SF20 he had. He had a fantastic four-day series. Um, you know, he's he's in the form of his life domestically, playing some really good cricket. They've spoken about how much they rate him as a cricketer. And then, yeah, you know, and, for and me, there's, just, a, there's a stunning lack of all-rounders in this list. Yeah, just for context, um, for those listening, just because you don't have a um, a contract doesn't mean you can't play for South Africa. Yeah, it just means that you don't get a, a consistent salary um, from them. So Vian Mulder, Kunta Dukak, Anand Nakia, Beddingham, they can all still be selected. It's just that they essentially, as a um, show of good faith, South Africa, you know, pay yeah. their uh, Chris South Africa pay their um, most notable players on on a month to month basis, and these are the players who do and don't have that um, contract now. Yeah, signed. but there is an expectation that you kind of go to your contract to players first, you know? Yes. Um, you know, yes. You, you're not going to sit, you're not going to, I mean, this doesn't, I mean, Rob Walters and Chuck, you can't just sit in, yeah. the, in a room with a blank canvas and decide on the best 13, 14 players to come in and ignore the contract yeah. players. There will have to be, you know, that, that's them saying to CSA, these are the guys we're going to select. So therefore yeah. you can give them contracts. Um but yeah, so I just think it's, it's, I think it's a I think it's a strange. I think Bjorn Fortein is someone who I mean, like I rate him. I think he's been really good, but he hasn't played. Never plays with the Proteus. He doesn't play a lot. Um, so that for me is a bit of a surprising one. I'm surprised yeah. Tony Azores he's gotten one so quickly. To be perfectly honest, and, I, and I'm a massive Tony Azores fan. Um, yeah, and I think I that he will. And I think he'll be our new Test opener. But I'm surprised that he's been given one so quickly. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. It's just frustrating with the lack of communication there. And also the fact that we've now reduced the size of the contract of players. Where I believe we should be looking at separating the contract. And that for yeah. me, and with all the S20 all the money that we're supposed to be bringing in, why can't we have different contracts and yeah. have more people contracted? Why can't we have yeah. a bit of him on a, on a Red Bull contract? A bit of him for me, it could be on both. But why can't we have a Calvary on a Red Bull contract? Yeah. Why can't we have Quinton de Kock and another yeah. here on my Because then, then the contract you know, size doesn't have bears, to be two different types as of big for each of them. Why but not? you can spread it across more players, which is a, mm. which is a better sign, sign effect, right? You'd think so, but I... You'd think so. You'd think so. Anyways, that, 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 that's CSA. Um, Stevie, before we get into the predictions of the week, just a, a couple... Um, other topics to touch on a lot of retirements in rugby three three other <clears throat> retirements um, Matteo Ragnar the referee bringing an end to a, a really long and successful career at the end of the year um, Danny Kerr um, the English scrum half 101 internationals um, has chosen to um, retire internationally not domestically and then Willem the bone collector Alberts mm. um, retires from all forms of rugby at, at the end of the season, I mean, Legend. an historic South African um, rugby figure, just a beast um, of a man, and he's extended his playing career by a fair, like a fair bit. I think people would would have kind of surprised that he's come this far. So, so fair enough to him. Um, yeah, I mean, he's but, forty years old, eh? Yeah, I mean, dude, he's still collecting bones. I tell you, yeah, no, <laughs> he, he, it's it's so strange as you mentioned because he's just such a he's so big. You know, he's so just an absolute colossus. And you and you know, you see players who players who play into, you know, the later stage of the career, 
kind of tend to be, you know, players who are a bit smaller, for example, maybe a bit more athletic. They can kind of keep up with the game and stuff like that. Yeah. And he's Rather just than and he's, making the hits that he has. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's just been, yeah, relentless. Yeah. Uh, cool that he's gonna, he's come back to the lines. I mean, I'm really and I'm really chuffed he's going to end it at the the the, the union where it all started. Um, mm. I, I've been, to be honest, I've actually missed him across the season. I think he's still actually been adding a lot of value, which has also been quite cool, cool yeah. to see. Um, but a big, but a big loss for, for well, just not a not a massive loss, but just such a cool player over the years. Yeah, yeah. just we 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 would we bid him farewell um, from the game, and then just to touch on some motorsports, Connor Sainz taking a victory in the Melbourne F1 DNFs from Hamilton, Russell, and Verstappen, which is always going to leave him in the open field. Obviously. Um, Signs out of a contract with Ferrari at the end of the year, so always nice just to get a get a wooden mm. under the belt, just to show them, you know, who's who's boss there and and what they're going to be missing out on. And then Brad Binder coming fourth in the Moto um, um, GP, the Portugal Grand Prix, um, <laughs> and he is sitting in a sweet second on the overall mm. logs, Stevie. So, I mean, he's been our you know shining South African light in the motorsport space. Um, bar none um, in the last couple of yeah. years. Um, and so, I mean, to see someone that high up is, is insane. Obviously, his brother um, is sitting in Moto2 um, as well. So, um, Brad Binder, keep on doing your thing and bringing, bringing um, some some pride to, to the flag. Um, Stevie, let's get into the predictions of this week. Uh, we're going to do Manchester City Arsenal. We're going to do Leicester Bulls and we're going to do Edinburgh Sharks. Probably the the three most um, or hardest to, to select games of the weekend. Um, <clears throat> given your dominance, I think you go first. And we'll start, we'll start with Manchester City versus Arsenal. City Arsenal. I'm going to have to go with City. Can I, can I tell you what you're going to say? Yeah, you can try. I think you're going to say 2-1. City loves 2-1. Arsenal go 2-0. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be so, for me, for me, it'll be so Arsenal to go and score six love, six love, six love, saving all these like these massive score lines, take on City, mm-hmm. and, then, and then and then not score a goal. Yo, yeah, are you are you forcing my hand into? I I, I think Arsenal will score. I'm gonna go two one in that case. Yeah, yeah. Well, still... I can get a game there for you to have. I mean, I mean, it does leave me very little room for error because essentially any goal difference above two means that you get that get that victory. Right. Um, so three one maybe no, okay. I'm actually yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go three one, Stevie. I'm going three one. Three one, oh uh, yeah. So we're both going City. I'm reluctantly. I would like Arsenal to win. Um, I'm not sure. Actually, I want to draw. I want to draw. Sorry. Yeah, you want to draw. It's quite obvious what you want. Yeah, I want to draw. Okay. Um, Leicester Bulls. Uh, Leicester hosting the Bulls. We obviously don't know the, the starting lineups yet, um, but let's let, let's let's pick it off to full straight teams. Well, you guys kick us off, or do I might kick us off again? Uh, I can kick us off. I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm so desperate to go Bulls. And and it's a little bit because I think Leicester might not pick the best team. Um, ah, I just don't know. Away from home, will the Bulls get it done? They didn't have the greatest game versus the Drags. Um, I'm going to go Bulls by three. Bulls by three. And away win for the Bulls. And away win for the Bulls. Yeah, no. Are you locking that in? I'm lo- <laughs> I'm locking that in. Okay, you I'm look, you got a smile on your face like like I've Le- made a huge error. Less to about seven. The Bulls will be playing against Ireland this weekend. You think so? You think I they're think all coming so. back? I think um I don't think know if we're gonna you see you have insider rugby knowledge now. You need, you need to share with me. <laughs> no, I don't you're you 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 withholding information from me. And you let you let me walk right into that one. Uh, so I, I don't think that um, <laughs> you're they're going to see all of them. I don't think we're going to see you know um, your. Uh, I don't think we're going to see like see a Dan Sheehan for example. But I think we're going to see a lot of the French players. But I think we'll see a Kian Healy. I think we'll see Ryan Beard, Jack right. Cronin, Ring Rose. Didn't really play a lot. Keller here. Um, Irish. Leicester yeah, like Leicester can't afford to lose this game because they traditionally. 
And I'm pretty sure it's happening once again where they're going uh, away in the last couple of rounds, and they lo- and that's when it gets gets hectic with Europe. So, um, you know, yeah. they they've got a staff can leg of Stormers and um, and Lions at the end of April, and they'll want to make sure that they can try and retake for that side. So they need to make sure that the next couple of games um, that they get results. Um, otherwise, because I mean, at the end of the day, this is the competition they haven't won yet. You know, so there is a lot of pressure on them too to get this done. So I think they'll go as strong as they can on Friday, um, and I think Bulls will, will. Will I don't think Bulls will have enough. But I could be very wrong. I could be very wrong. Yeah, I, I hope I hope you're wrong. Not just for just for this, but because I'd love to watch the Bulls beat Leinster away. I mean, they have before yeah. in the knockouts, obviously. Um, yeah. But but yeah, it'll be interesting. I think I think it'll be two really really strong club teams I mean two of the best club teams in the world essentially going against each other so that's always going to be fun to watch and the last one for the week Edinburgh versus Sharks Stevie um, do the Sharks continue um, on the on a well can yeah. they back to back wins this for me is quite a difficult one to call because um, we don't know what Sharks team we're going to see look I mean in terms of hey, personnel we know we're going to see I think it'll pretty much be unchanged um, but trying to work out, you know, the kind of performance we'll see. Edinburgh's lying down the table a little bit. They've had a very good, good season. Um, ironically, they actually sit with a negative uh, points difference, which is very interesting. They're the only wow. side uh, in the top eight with a negative points difference. So they do tend to concede points. Um, I don't think that they've traveled particularly well, um, and I, I think they're going to struggle up front. Um, so I think Sharks will, will grab another victory. Um, I don't think it might be as runaway as as in Cape Town, so I'll say Sharks by five. But I I think it could very easily be filming Edinburgh by fifteen. Sharks have been that inconsistent yeah. so far this season, but yeah. I'll back Sharks by five. Yeah, I, I've actually gone Sharks by seven. So I think we're in a similar camp there, where we just think yeah. I think I think the Sharks are they get the cogs are turning now. I don't think their team that they're not. I don't think they're getting blowout victories. I they didn't score that many tries. I mean, you wouldn't yeah. when you look far down the table. Um, but it's as you said. I don't think Edinburgh are traveling very well. Um, and I just think the the strength of that Sharks forward pack will be a bit much for them. Um, and I think they're gonna they're gonna take it. Yeah, but we're about to go into another URC break after this weekend. So it's it's so difficult to really like build momentum in the URC. Or you yeah, yeah, yeah. games for, we're back for two games. Bang! Then we're into a break again. Yeah, um, I mean to be fair, after this break, it should be a good stretch into into the into the knockouts. Then, so um, th- that'll be exciting. Yeah, I think, but yeah, I think I mean, with all these competitions, they run for so long. Yeah, um, might have to get into a bit of Super Rugby, Stevie. Yeah. Well, got EPCR, um, so very very yeah. excited, and I'm really hoping if the Stormers can get a playoff victory, they get a home quarter final. I'd actually ironically be in Cape Town for that weekend, and I can go mm. and. Uh, Check out a game at the actual stadium for the first time. So if you guys oh, just not be used good. and win a game next that's weekend and grab a grab a home quarterfinal, it'll be highly appreciated. Yeah. No, I, the boys will do it to you. I'll have a word with them and just let let them know that Stevie's in town. So do it for him if any if not anything. You know what'll probably happen is they'll probably get like a home quarterfinal and they'll draw like the bulls and it'll be at Loftus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll like wear with him at the airport, like cheers, like yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. He's going to go to stadium to approve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dear. Um, but what's probably quite cool is this weekend is Easter weekend, which means it's uh, schoolboy rugby across this weekend. So I'm off to uh, Cares Fest on Saturday, which is quite cool. I've actually done Saints Fest a few times, never done Cares Fest. But uh, yeah, if you want to watch, uh, Super Sports Schools are showing all the various schoolboy festivals, and there's been some really, really cool games. Jeffy Beanie yeah. and Gray, long nice. Monday. Absolutely nice. Um, so I love, yeah, I love me some schoolboy rugby. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's the best form of rugby if we if, we, if everyone's just being honest. Um, but yeah, it's always a very exciting time in the rugby calendar. Very right. So yeah, if you guys are out there, come come say hi to me at uh, at Cares Fest. Uh, I'm not exactly sure he's playing, but um, yeah, find out on the day. Yeah, cool. Cares. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, yeah, right. Well, yeah, what do you No, thank you very much for the show. Very. Very tight. Lots of um, lots that's going to start kicking on now. As you say, certain things speeding up, certain things slowing down. Um, I'm very excited to watch um, 
particularly the South African players in the IPL. I think that's going to be um, exciting to see you just with the T20 World Cup um, the rest of the year. Obviously, the rug is coming up and the Prem is back. So, exciting yeah. weekend ahead. Um, but happy Easter, everyone, for those celebrating. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will catch you next week.